there blues fans this is John with the Blues Guitar Institute and this is your Tuesday Blues lesson number 131. Now back in lesson 130 we got started with some super swampy Delta Blues style licks and in this lesson we're going to carry things one step further. We're just going to take that idea and those concepts and just turn up the intensity on those licks a notch or two. I think you're really going to enjoy it. But now two quick things before we get started on today's lesson. First, if you want to grab the tab for this lesson, then you'll have to become a premium member of Blues Guitar Institute. For premium members, I've got a PDF and a Guitar Pro 6 file ready to download right under the video on this lesson page. So if you're not already a member, you'll need to sign up in order to get the tab. Second, if you're watching this on YouTube and you really dig what's happening here every single Tuesday, then show some support for the BGI channel and hit the subscribe button right now. All right, let's grab your guitar, tune up to standard tuning, and let's get moving around in this Delta lesson. Now, it's really best to take a piece like this and narrow your focus. You're going to have a hard time and get overwhelmed if you try to learn the whole thing all at once. So right now, I want to focus on just the first four bars over the E chord. Let's have a listen and then we'll talk about exactly what you need to do to get through these four bars. Okay, and we actually moved right into the A chord. It's just very natural to move into that A chord, but that's actually the top of bar five. So we're limiting our focus here to the first four bars. And you can tell that this has got a nice driving. This is a steady bass and it's happening um, with this sixth string. And I've got a palm mute there and I'm basically playing on the quarter beat. I'm tapping my foot along just to kind of sync up my foot and my thumb just to reinforce good timing. So you would count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Four. And then what we're doing is um, bringing in this little double stop shape here. It's right out of an E7 chord, so it sounds nice and bluesy here. I've got the B note here on the third string, fourth fret, and the D note here on the second string, third fret. And those two together, we slide in and pluck a triplet rhythm while keeping the thumb going. This is done a lot in blues, and it sounds like this. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet. So that's the first three beats, and notice that I was doing a slide in on beat one, one triplet, two triplet, and three, three triplet. Then we still keep the triplet rhythm going for beat four, but we're going to shift away from these notes here and just do this. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And that move is the second fret, third string to the first and then down to this E note, get us back to an E sound on the fourth fret of the, sorry, the fourth string second fret. And then for the top of the next bar, we're gonna do something that's a little more lick intense, and it's gonna sound like this. couple of things happening there. We keep the bass going, but the first bit is bass, open first, and then we do this little hammer on, pull off on the third string. Real bluesy move there as well. So we're doing that from uh, the second fret on the third string up to the third, pull off, and then open on the third. And then once you hit the open, come and land down back on that E note, second fret, fourth string. And then we're going to finish this bar out by doing a bass pump and then the open first string and then a nice little triplet there at the end. So, and that's simply the third fret that, um, that seventh note from the uh, E7 chord, that D note. So we're doing that. And then plucking the open first string and then second string to kind of finish out that triplet. So here's what these two bars sound like. And I'll play them rather slowly for you. And 
then for the third bar, we're going to move back into this shape here. But we're going to do two sets of triplets there. So one triplet, two triplet. The third triplet is going to come in a little bit of a different fashion here. So that triplet is I'm moving up and hitting the open first string and the fifth fret second string. Those are both E notes, so it just provides a nice little doubling effect, but it's the same exact note that's actually unison. So I'm moving into that and then back to this third fret on the second string, but I'm plucking that with the open first string, then rounding out that little passage by hitting the B note on the third string, fourth fret. And then we're going to end that bar with another triplet. You can tell this uh, E piece is very triplet heavy, and that is going to be this familiar move here. Right there. So we've got one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, one triplet. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And then for the fourth bar and the final bar of this little passage in E, we're going to do um, something very similar to bar two. All right, so that move is the same. But instead of doing this little triplet to end us out of the bar, like we did before, what we're going to do is this little move. So that's um, you can either pull off here, or sometimes I pluck the note on the 4th string 2nd fret, so that E, to the D, and then this G note here, 6th string 3rd fret, and kind of tug on that. Just pull down, let's get a nice little quarter step bend, and then we're ready to move right into the A chord. So let me play through all four bars of these. Uh, of this section over E. Now I'll play through it rather slowly before we move on to the A bit. I want to make sure you get this part down in E. So here we go. and recognize that that right there puts us into the very top of bar five. That's the next downbeat. But now that you're ready and you've worked through the part on E, definitely pause this thing and make sure that you get everything down pat before moving on to the A part. But if you're ready, that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna head right into the A part. Let's have a listen to bars five and six, which is moving into our A chord. And I'll play the little bit from the E part that moves us into A, just to give you some context here. And the last bit moves us back into E. You can tell this is moving us right back into our E chord here. So that's actually the top of the next bar, but it's really important to connect these chord changes. And that's why I'm giving you a sneak preview of the next bar in these little sections. But for right now, we're gonna focus on the A part. And it looks, feels, and sounds a lot the same as to what we did in lesson number 130. We're really pulling out this note here, this G note on the first string, third fret. That note is the seventh of A. It makes the A chord an A seventh. Whether you do it here, here, or anywhere else, that's an A seven. And so this note really gives the, the piece a bluesy character. And what we're really doing is moving through with our steady bass now on the fifth string, keeping that palm mute down, getting that thud sound, and really calling out this third fret note. So let's have a listen. I'll play it slowly for you. And there's something that's a little different from lesson number 130. We're going to pick up and do that same sort of triplet sound right at the end of bar five. And that triplet is the open first string, 
third fret second string back to the open first string. Then I'm going to catch the second fret of the second string before heading back into my down B here. Just a little grace note, really. Now let's uh, listen closely for that. Actually comes right after beat one of the next measure. And then we're right back into that third fret note. This is where it gets a little cool. And with just a subtle um, sort of legato move right here, we add some flash to this part in A. So this sequence is, I'm hammering on from two to three, and then pulling off. Pull back off from three to two, and then from two to open. So it's two, three, and then pull off, pull off. And the timing is really important. It gives it this super bluesy flair when you speed up the end of this. You let that first note hang a little bit. And that's what we're looking for. Then we come back and do another pull off from two to the open first string. And then we move into our E chord here just by hammering up on the first fret of the third string, getting into that E sound. So let's play through the A part, and I'll play it through slowly, and uh, I'm gonna tag on the end of bar four just to give us that context, and then the very uh, beginning of the next part as we move back into E. So here we go, play it slowly. What I would encourage you to do now is pause this video and then play through the E part and play through the A part and make sure that you can connect them together and that you can play these total six bars together flawlessly. And if you can't play it flawlessly, keep working at it. Work, work, work until you can get it down. And you're halfway through the progression. And the next thing that we need to do is go back to the E part, which is much the same as what we've already covered. Now I'll play through it slowly for you here so that you can watch these two bars and hear how we transition into the next section, which is into our B7 chord. So here we go. I'm going to play through that part back in E slowly as we move into our B7 chord. All right, as you can tell, what we've done here is basically we're calling back to bars three and four, but things get a little bit different as we head into this B7 chord. So what we're gonna do is start out with that same uh, bass happening on the downbeats and the triplet bit. So one triplet, two triplet, then we move into three triplet, four triplet, just like before. So this bar is identical to bar three that we've already covered. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And this is where things get a little bit different. We do our bass, the open first string, that little hammer on pull off on the third string, getting back to this uh, root note here, the E. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a different sequence to kind of walk down through the notes and then land back in this B7. So here's what that bit sounds like. And I'll play it slowly for you. All right, so what we're doing here is we've landed there with our last part. We're gonna throw in a bass and an open first string. Then we're gonna pull off on the fourth string. It's down at the second fret. We're gonna pull off from two to zero. Then we're gonna hit the second fret on the fifth string. Then we're gonna pull off from the first fret, fifth string to the open. And 
it's very important to kind of choke down on this note here. This is a B note on the fifth string. Hear how that one is kind of um, kind of stifled a little bit. We're kind of choking down on it. Then we're going to hit the third fret on the sixth string and then hammer from first fret to the second to move into our B7, and that happens on the fifth string. And definitely take some uh, creative license here and, and definitely toy around with the dynamics. I like to kind of snap the strings a little bit when I get down into these licks in the bass register. You can totally do it without it. But to me, it feels kind of natural to add some of these snaps, which is really just kind of picking up more up on the string um, rather than just like this. You kind of pull the string off of the fretboard and the snap happens when it crashes back down on the fretboard. But anyway, add that if you, uh, if you can and if you think it sounds cool. But here's the way it sounds when I do it. All right, so let's play these two bars together and I'll play them through slowly for you. And here we are at this B note, fifth string, second fret, and that moves us right into our B7, which is the very next section of this. Now that we've um, played through that second section on the E chord, we landed with this hammer on at the second fret. And if you do that with your index finger to your middle finger, you're going to be set up to just let this B7 chord fall right into place. And once you're there, what we're going to do for this B7 part is just a little bit of uh, finger picking. So there's not really a lick or anything happening right here, but we're just going to pluck through the chord notes and it'll sound like this. And you can tell we've got a couple of upstrokes. You can do that with your finger and do kind of a brush up if you want to. I definitely love doing that, so you'll see me do that from time to time. We really just want to call out these chord tones here. Then we move from here right into our A part, which should sound familiar to you. That's the tail end of the A part that we already covered. Right back into that E in the same familiar way. And so once you get to this part, you're ready for the turnaround. And this turnaround is going to sound similar to the turnaround that we covered in lesson number 130, but we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually not going to add some of the uh, extra melodic notes. We're going to keep this more in the vein of a, a typical Robert Johnson style turnaround, ones without a lot of flash. And it'll sound like this. we go right back to that B7 at the end and do pretty much the same picking as we did before. But the turnaround bit is really a quarter beat on the open six string and this you can let ring. It's nice to have this droning out as you do your turnaround. So this is that double stop shape that we started with on the E7, slide into it pluck it twice, move it down a half step, so one fret, pluck it twice, down a half step, pluck it twice, and then do a quick hammer on on the third string first fret from the open, and then down on that root note, that E on the second fret fourth string. Then from here, you just want to move into your B7. So this is, I'm pinching the fifth and the second strings, then plucking the third and fourth, then doing those two quick upstrokes, 
followed by a down bass beat. And that sort of picking can definitely be heard in some of Robert Johnson's turnarounds. So let's play through this last bit, starting with that first B7 that we hit, and I'll play through it slowly for you. Here we go. notice there instead of letting that E drone I did kind of pluck it but it's very light I don't want that E super pronounced as we're doing this particular turnaround all right now that we've learned each different section I want to play through things back up to speed so that you can hear how everything fits together and how these parts really play off of each other. you really got a lot out of this lesson and then it gave you some more lick ideas to pump into the framework of the Delta Blues that we built back in lesson number 130. And remember, if you want to pick up the tab, which are super useful practice tools, then you can do so if you're a premium member of Blues Guitar Institute. And if you're not already a member, I invite you to sign up at bluesguitarinstitute.com premium. That's it for this week. Thanks. Keep practicing and play on.